All right, welcome to Creator Hardware, and today we're going to set up my test Unraid server. Now, the test system is a UZ on 64 gigabytes of RAM, way overkill, but I had it, so whatever. But we're setting up Unraid. Now, let's talk about the couple issues with Unraid. If you're not familiar with Unraid, it is a paid service, meaning you have a one time subscription fee, so you have to pay for it to use it. Now, the other problem with Unraid is, well, it boots off of a USB drive. Now, there's some workarounds to get it to work onto a hard drive, but we're not gonna get into that kind of stuff. So let's talk about the USB itself. It has to be 2.0, it has to have a unique identifier, and that's some of the problems with doing Unraid, is because it has to load onto this USB. The other big caveat is it has to be 32 gigabytes or less, and that's getting hard to find. Now, when I was gonna set it up, I was gonna set it up on the Sand Cruiser, which is old, no longer available in 32 gigs. I thought I still had a 32 gig that was available. It's 64 gigs, so it doesn't work. Okay, fine. I'll go to my local Best Buy and buy every 2.0 they have and do a test on which ones work. <laughs> that did not work out well. <laughs> my Best Buy sucks. <laughs> So I had to go to Amazon and well, that added further delays because I ordered all the name brand ones that were available. I still haven't gotten one and I don't know when I'm gonna get it. It's delayed. So that is a huge problem. Go ahead and set up our Unraid thumb drive. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and download for Windows. It's downloaded. We're gonna click on it. And then obviously here, we need to select a USB. Now I wanna show you something real quick. This is a SanDisk 3.0, and it's gonna give me, I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up. It says incompatible. We're gonna put the PYN 2.0 in, and it's gonna go ahead and give us a device. Now, first thing we have to do is that drive that is compatible, we have to rename it to Unraid. It is now called Unraid, give it a name, now you need to go ahead and decide how you're gonna set up the network, whether you want DHCP or static IP. You can change it in the GUI after you set it up. It's easier just to do DHCP, you get an automatic login, et cetera. You don't have to go into the, into the terminal and put a IP address in there. Allow UEFI boot depends on your motherboard, whether that's clicked. If your motherboard does not support UEFI, don't click it, <laughs> but mine does. So we're gonna go ahead and hit right. And obviously you get a warning saying erase and write. It's gonna go ahead and create it. Now, if this goes really, really, really fast and doesn't seem to be doing anything, like it's really quick, it's probably not doing it right. Now, when it finishes, it'll just say close. Syncing file system, extracting files. This is how you know it's working, by the way. If it's not extracting files, you never see this part of it, it didn't work. So it's really important uh, that you watch for this kind of stuff. If you don't see this kind of action, it's probably not getting set up. All right, so went ahead and finished up the write. We are done, we can go ahead and close. All right, so with it closed and everything like that, we can go ahead and eject it if you want to. Now I have this PYN 2.0 that uploaded, did everything it was supposed to do. So hopefully everything's gonna work. So we're gonna do a first boot and then we're gonna set it up in the GUI on a desktop, but we're gonna go ahead and do the first boot. It's never been booted before. So let's see what happens. Now, just for clarifications, I'm using an internal USB adapter. So the, this will be inside the case, not outside. So this will be a virgin boot. Well, it's a good sign, it's posting the... Okay, so we got US, so we got Unraid up here. Booting automatic boot in one second. We're fine, we're gonna go ahead and boot into it. Now I went ahead and set it up for DHCP, rather than a uh, manual IP, just for ease of setting it up.
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and type in that web address that you saw in the splash screen. You're gonna go ahead and hit that. You're gonna do root, and then it's gonna ask you for a new password. Set up your password, set how secure you want it. Mine's not that secure because it's a test system. I'm not gonna have anything valuable on it. Go ahead and log in and you are in the GUI. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is mount your hard drive. So you're gonna go into here, you have to have a parity drive and you're gonna pick one of these drives to be your parity drive. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the next one. And then we're gonna click on this one. Again, making sure they're all the hard drives. Now I've got an SSD down here and we're gonna click on that to make it the cache drive. So we've got a cache drive set up and I've got unfortunately <laughs> bad sectors on one of my hard drives, joy. So we'll have to go ahead and deal with that. Wrong disc. <laughs> Dashboard, we see system allocation. Now what you're gonna wanna do after you get all this stuff assigned is start the array and then it's going to do a parity check, rewrite over all of the data that's on these drives. And I fortunately I bet <laughs> that one's gonna fail, <laughs> unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to order a drive to replace that. Now unfortunately, because my two drives are saying unmountable, I've got to go ahead and do a format. So we got to collect that. It's going to warn you and hit format and reformat them. So unfortunately I can't start their array right now because I got to format these. Hopefully that'll fix the formatting issue. Once we get done formatting, we can start the array. Now keep in mind when you go ahead and start the array, it's going to take however long it takes. It may be several hours to days, depending on how many hard drives you have in the system and what they've got to go through. So don't expect to be using this quickly. It's just how it works. So this is what we're doing. Uh, we do have, when it gets completely formatted and all that, um, it will take, I will have two terabytes of, storage with parity data. So Unraid works a little differently than ZFS. Parity is degraded. So again, because of the parity degraded line, I'm gonna have to get a quick, I'm gonna have to get a one terabyte in to replace that. So we'll get that ordered. And then, now coming up, we're gonna be doing a bunch of different stuff with this. Obviously I've got to replace that one drive or format it or something, but I've got to get that fixed. And then we'll start being able to play with it this is just the setup of it. Quick and easy, it's not really hard. You know, it's trial period, I gotta put my credit card information and all that. Now get subscribed if you wanna see what I'm gonna do with this system. I'm gonna be at playing with Docker containers, uh, virtual machines. I wanna test out Unraid's virtual machines because, well, they've supposedly improved it and I wanna play with it a little more. But the whole point of this system is just to be able to play. It's all what home labbing is about. So if you want to see me struggle with that kind of stuff, get subscribed so you can see those videos. So as always, thanks for watching. This is Creator Hardware.